We normally don't send out two video messages in the course of one week. This may suffice for next week uh, since it's going out on Friday, but I may do another depending upon uh, what happens next week at a clergy day on Tuesday. And uh, most of you uh, are aware of the decision that was made by the Supreme Court this past week. Uh, the decision I received was uh, Wednesday afternoon. And yesterday I was pondering, uh, should I wait till Sunday? Should I write something? Should I say something? And I thought this was probably the best way to get the word out. That in fact, uh, 14 out of the 29 churches that were named in the lawsuit have lost. And we are one of the ones that lost. There's lots of reasons for that. Primarily, it's because of what our bylaws say. Uh, a lot of the reason is that uh, the canons of the National Church, uh, some of the historical parishes that were actually here before the National Church existed as a national entity, uh, they did not have this in their bylaws. We did. And because we were established, or if you will, reestablished in the 60s, and uh, then someone actually edited it and rewrote it uh, later on in our history, the bottom line is that uh, we have lost our property to the Episcopal Church. However, uh, losing the, the deed, if you will, does not mean that we will vacate the property. There's a few discussions that need to take place before we decide what is going to happen to the property and what is going to happen to St. Luke's in the future. I believe it's very possible that we will be here in our building for quite some time, at least immediately, because negotiations have to take place. The Episcopal Church at this point is not asking for us to hand over the keys and walk out of the building. And uh, I don't believe that that will happen quickly, if at all, because I'm not sure that they necessarily uh, want to try to establish another church on the island. That is uncertain. But one thing I do believe is that we do have some negotiation points that we can work with them. I have spoken to both Bishop Lawrence and Bishop Edgar in the last couple of days, and both of them are very hopeful for us. Uh, in particular, uh, Chip was going, Bishop Edgar was going to meet with the Episcopal Bishop to negotiate. And we do have some strengths, in fact, that other churches don't have in terms of negotiations. Uh, some of them are up in the air. Uh, but I believe that we're in a good position to stay in our buildings short term, if not long term. Uh, as I said, there's going to need to be negotiations and it will take a while before all of those pan out. But I don't believe that uh, we necessarily need to leave our property. And I know we will not be leaving our property in the near future. So for those of you that are concerned, worried, upset, please rest assured, number one, that for now we're staying. That's the first point. The second point is that the Lord is in charge, and we have to trust that. Uh, throughout Scripture, we're warned of persecution. We're warned that things will not always go our way. If we stand up for Jesus Christ and his word, uh, that there will be challenges. And we have some fundamental differences with the Episcopal Church. And so in many ways, uh, we shouldn't be surprised that this will happen or does happen and may happen in terms of what's going to happen with us in the future of our property and our buildings. Uh, I do not fully comprehend or understand why the Supreme Court chose as it did, uh, particularly since the Episcopal Church did not pay for anything that we have here. Um, I don't fully understand uh, why it is a national entity takes over a local church. Um, I do understand from the perspective of the Episcopal Church and that there is this thing called the Dennis Canon that was approved in the 70s that gives uh, the Episcopal Church a trust interest in all the parishes. A trust interest, in my mind, means that there's a shared uh, sense of the building, but not total ownership. So there's much about this decision that is confusing to me. Uh, I'm struggling with a bit, uh, but the bottom line is, we just need to trust the Lord at this time. He has us. He knows what is going to happen in the future. Uh, after Easter Sunday, I was uh, just so blessed and uh, joyful at seeing a full church, at uh, the beautiful decorations, uh, and blessed with the campus that we have. And then to find out this information on Wednesday was kind of uh, very disheartening and made me really sad. But immediately I just went to prayer and I said, Lord, I, I am so confused by this decision and how the Supreme Court could possibly come to this decision. But they did. 
And uh, they did in particular for 14 churches in our diocese, of which we're one. And uh, I've had a number of calls from fellow clergy. I have spoken, as I mentioned, both bishops, and I'm waiting to hear from our lawyer slash lawyers uh, to hear what they have to say about it. I did get uh, an email from uh, Henrietta, Henrietta Golding, who is our, uh, our lawyer, worked with Alan Runyon at a diocesan level, and she said she is going to ponder this, reflect on it, and get back to me on uh, what her perspective is and where we go from here. And so I don't have a, a lot to say to you about specifics. The only thing I can say to you uh, is, first of all, nothing will happen quickly. And secondly, that the Lord has us, and we need to trust that. I've been especially prayerful the last couple of days about this whole situation. Uh, I'm not fretting or worried. At times, uh, I'm a little frustrated with myself that I couldn't see that in terms of the, the bylaws and maybe change that before all this unfolded. Uh, we did try to change it uh, after uh, what happened happened. We even filed for a quick claim deed, which was given to the church, and yet none of this was uh, fruitful. And uh, I, I, as I said, I'm, uh, I'm a little uh, uh, frustrated by what's going on, but at the same time, uh, I have become more prayerful and more mindful that the Lord has us and seeking to trust him amidst this storm right now is really key for us. And speaking of which, we're going to continue to move forward for the sake of the gospel. We will continue to worship. We will continue to have classes in small groups. We will continue to have fellowship in a parish life here. And we're not going anywhere immediately. So please don't back off uh, from your commitment. Uh, you may be concerned. You may be worried. But don't back off from your commitment to the Lord, trusting Him and seeking to grow in the knowledge and love of the Lord here uh, while we are here. And... Uh, Speaking of which, we're going to have uh, a conference even in May, May 20th and 21st. You'll be hearing more information about that. Richard Blackaby is coming back. And we are still continuing on seeking him and building his kingdom and making disciples, including you, because that's what we're committed to. Uh, the church, in effect, is the people. And that's what scripture tells us. We are the church, ecclesia, the called out ones. And we are called out from the world and the ways of the world and the things of the world. So in some ways we shouldn't be surprised that we will at times have challenges like this, if not others. And I invite you to just be prayerful and to just trust the Lord at this time. And uh, we will be constantly trying to stay in touch with you as we learn more and as we continue to uh, negotiate and figure this out. But uh, my prayer for you is that you know his peace. Uh, and do not be angry or upset because the Lord has you and me. He holds our future. Let's pray. Lord God, uh, as much as we wrestle with decisions like this, struggle with it, don't even see the sense of it or uh, how it is something that is uh, legal, binding, allowed. And yet, Lord, we are not of this world. We are of you. And Lord, no matter what happens in this world and the circumstances of this world, the injustices and the struggles of this world, we know that you have us now and forever when we trust you, when we walk with you and love you and seek to grow in you and seek to grow your kingdom. Lord, keep us mindful of our primary focus. The building is a blessing, has been a blessing, and at least for now can, will continue to be a blessing. And we pray that you help us to figure it out but also to remember the church. The church is the people of God, and that's what we are. And we need to encourage and support, pray for, and, uh, and just be a blessing to each other during this time, but all the time. Lord, make us mindful of that, and help us during these days to trust in you, and your grace, and your love. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.